it's still in the back of your mind. I mean, you think about it all the time because when I had my had the heart attack, I wasn't feeling sick or nothing going on. It was blood clot went from my leg to my heart. I mean, it was automatic. It wasn't something that was brought on over a period of time. There was no warning signs or nothing. So it's always in my mind. And it gets better day by day by day, but my mind goes back to, okay, where's the hospital? How do I get there? Where do I, you know, am I gonna die today? Am I not? You know, there's, it's still there all the time. And you think about that, where's that nearest hospital? My son met me halfway and he said, mom, dad's got that look in his eye again because prior to this, he'd been having symptoms like, um, you know, chest pain for probably about a year prior. I actually had had a blockage in my Widowmaker. And so we had finally talked him into like going in, getting it checked out, and he had the stent placed. I'm not one of those people that just comes home, sits on the couch, I'm constantly at the ranch or working on a car or doing the yard or doing something. I mean, I felt good all the way up till that day, and then that day I, I got done and I was like, Man, I just, it just, my whole body just felt like I would just run a marathon. I was just like, what is the deal? Something is wrong. Something is not right here. We get home. I take his blood pressure. I check his pulse. It's, it's not good. So I laid him down on the bed. He, you know, I checked his blood pressure again, checked his pulse, and it all went bad from there. He's like, it's not good. He's calling my daughter. She's already here. He grabs his nitro pills, Madison and Patrick throw him in the car and literally take him themselves to the ER. From there, it just went so quickly and so fast. And I mean, it was, it was a blur. I remember we were going 90 miles an hour. To me, we weren't going fast enough. To me, we were just barely going. I was like, speed this car up. I mean, get me to the hospital, 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 hospital. So he got to the ER. They called a cardiac alert right away. At one point, he's like, I'm going to die, I'm going to die, I'm going to die. And I remember laying there and them sticking something on my chest, my chest, my chest, my chest. And then I remember being shocked twice. I remember just being shocked, and I was like, oh, my God, that hurt. And then I remember being shocked a second time. I don't remember nothing else after that. Now, they, I was shocked, what, over 40 times. They did CPR for 55 minutes. My daughter and I knew that it did a, it, it, it wasn't good, and we, we knew we were probably losing him. And they kept giving us reports, and we knew it was bad. They were slowly breaking it to us, and every time they came in, they told us something worse and something worse. My daughter lost it. Even though I knew what I knew <laughs> medically, I just... I just felt that I had to just, it's gonna be okay. And I just kept saying, God's gonna take care of this. And my daughter got so upset at me. She's like, you know what this means. He's not gonna be okay. This is bad, he's dying. We need to start calling everybody. Courtney Bine, who was a Guia Delta, she was a nurse advocate for me. I mean, she wouldn't call it. She said, no, we're not calling, no, we're not. So they didn't, they wouldn't call it. So they kept doing CPR, 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 CPR. I mean, I'm very thankful for, especially Courtney saying, no, we're not calling it, we're, we're not gonna do that. We were very, very fortunate that they worked hard, got him up there at, in the time frame that they did, that he coded up there and they were able to save him. So, so we're thankful for that. <laughs> and I mean, the cath lab at Cui Delta is awesome too. When you go in the cath lab, it's scary because you're going there for a heart thing. You know, you're you're worried, you're scared, but they make you feel so comfortable. It's very calming. You're not, you know, they're trying to keep you calm, and they do an awesome job at it. And uh... <laughs> it's still hard. I remember waking up, and I remember my eyes were so heavy. I was trying to get them to to lift up. It's like they weighed 100 pounds. I finally got him to open up. <laughs> we're just very thankful. We're thankful to God, we're thankful to the ER, we're thankful to my daughter's colleagues, we're thankful to Courtney Bile, to Clarissa Alvarado, to the doctors and the nurses of the ED. Queen of Delta, I mean, they went above and beyond. They didn't have to advocate for his life to that degree. They really didn't. And, you know, they, they, were, they were wonderful. And we're very thankful to them and to God and that we still have them. It's been a, it's 
been a long road. And it'll be a year July 14th, so. But I do live life a lot slower. I've learned to slow life down a whole lot, appreciate life a whole lot more, enjoy life a whole lot more, not just let it pass by. But I'm very appreciative of Cahuilla Delta because it was a miracle. I mean, numerous people didn't make it, don't make it. I mean, it's just how it is that I'm here today. It's very important to have a hospital in the community because you don't think about it when you don't need it, but when you need it, you think about it, let me tell you. Thanks to Cuya Delta, I'm alive today. Thanks to them and their employees that I am, I am alive today.